Welcome to the final video in Discrete Math, Finite State Machines. We just talked about formal languages, so now we'll apply them to some finite state machines. These are diagrams which you'll see in the next couple slides, but first I should introduce them. A finite state machine M is a 5-tuple Q sigma delta Q O and F, and I'll explain what each one is. Q is a set of states, and these are usually written as Q sub 0 all the way up to Q sub n. We have sigma, which is our alphabet, which you should be familiar with. Delta is a function that takes a state and a letter in our alphabet and takes it to another state. So you'll see how this works in a second. But for instance, I'd have delta, I'd take a state, say Q0, and some letter in our alphabet A, and out would come another state that it goes to. Uh, we also have Q0, which is going to be our starting state. When I say Q0, what I really mean is some specific state that we start at, and we indicate this as an arrow pointing to our state. Sometimes it might be Q1 or Q2, but for all intents and purposes, it'll be Q0. And F is going to be a subset of all the states, and this are basically the final states, or what's also called the accept states. So if a machine takes you to a final state, then the machine accepts that state. And it says, okay, that is a valid string of characters. So let's do an example here. This is an example finite state machine. It looks kind of nice. We have a starting point, which is represented by this arrow. So this is where we start at Q0. And what it does is we input a string of characters. And if we give it, say, okay, we're going to let our alphabet be 0 and 1 here. And if we give it a 0, we start in Q0, and if we give it a 0, it goes back to Q0. So as an example here, we'd say delta of Q0 and 0 will output Q0. While on the other hand, if we give Q0 a 1, then it goes to state 1. So if we gave it a string, or actually what I'll do is I'll, I'll go forward a little bit and I will denote that this Q1 here, if it has a double circle around it, it is an end state. More than one state can have double circles around it, but basically the double circle means it accepts it. So, if I gave a string 0, 0, 0, 0 and input it into the machine, what we'd see here is we'd start here, we'd go back to Q0, then go back to Q0 again, go back, go back, go back, and we'd finish in a state that does not accept it. So the character would be invalid, and the language would say, no, we don't want that. So we try again, and we input the character 1. We just give it a 1, and if we just give it a 1, the machine says, okay, we finish in Q1, and that is an acceptable state. What's interesting about this machine is that as soon as you enter Q1, whatever number you put in afterwards, it just accepts it. So as long as there is a 1 somewhere in your string, the machine will accept it. And that is an interesting result, because why would you want a machine that just accepts anything that has a 1? Well, if we abstract it and say, what are the applications of a machine that accepts any input that is a 1. So say there's two inputs, and we say this is a yes or no. If there is at least a yes, at least one yes, it accepts it. So what could you model in the real world after this? Well, perhaps, I don't know, let's say you have a program, and what it wants is it, it is a test program. It is for teachers, and you have a student, and basically, what this one here is, it's a create a student button. 
And as soon as you press that button, you have started the program. And it doesn't matter what button you press after that, because that student is created, and therefore you have satisfied the goal of creating a student. And here is just not pressing any button. So basically, as soon as you open the program, you've created a student, and that is your success story for this finance date machine. So a lot of these are really abstract. So let's get into perhaps drawing a finite state machine, which is something that is always fun to do. And we're given that the alphabet is just zeros and ones, and we're told to draw a state machine that only accepts multiples of two. Now, here's a question. What does this mean, multiples of two? Because all we can do here are input strings like 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Like, we can put in random strings like that. So when it says only accept multiples of 2, you have to kind of abstract an idea and say, okay, what this machine really is, is if we input a string like this, what we're really saying is 0, plus 1, plus 1, plus 0, plus 1, so on and so forth. So you have to sort of define what you're doing, because finite state machines are actually more of abstract machines that you apply to things. So, what we do is we start out with an initial state, we'll call this Q0, we'll draw a little line to it, and it only accepts multiples of two. So let's think of some strings that it would accept. And let's think of the most bare minimum strings it would accept. It accepts the state, I will do this in green, it accepts 0. It accepts 1, 1. It accepts 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. It will accept 0, 0, 1, 1. Now, we've done a lot of things it accepts. What about the things it doesn't accept? And this is equally as important. So these are the OK boxes. Now, the bad boxes are 0, 1, 1, 0. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, so on and so forth. So the question is, how do we start? Well, if we don't do anything, and even if we just have, say, an empty string that is also acceptable, then we're going to start off in this state here, and it's going to be accepted. As soon as you start the machine, it is accepted. So, because the empty string is an accepted final state, the first one is accepted. Now, here's the thing. Because there are clearly things that aren't accepted, we have to draw another state over here, Q1, that doesn't accept things. And how does it not accept things? Well, here's the thing. If you just input a zero, you're good in the first state. But as soon as you put a 1 in, it goes to this not accepted state. Now here's the question, is how do we get back? Well, if we put in another one, we're okay. Because in order to have two ones accepted, you go to Q1 if you're an odd number of ones, and you go back to Q0 if you're an even number of ones. And clearly, zeros don't have any effect on the machine whatsoever. It does not take a state from one to another because you're adding zero, so you're effectively doing nothing. So we have these ones alternating states back and forth. So when there's an even number of ones, it's in Q0. And when there's an odd number of ones, it's in Q1. And that is a finite state machine that accepts multiples of two, given this alphabet. So that's pretty cool. All right, now that we know how to draw them, what about if I give you a state machine and say, what does it do? In fact, I've been a little vague here. I've said, well, sigma is 0, 1, 2, and the letter R. What does R stand for? Well, you got to figure that out. So take a moment, look at this machine, and tell me what you think it does. All right, hopefully you've had a look at this. So here's the thing. The first machine, the first state, it just accepts. It says, okay, that's cool. So if we take the string 0, it accepts it. Cool. Now, what I notice here is that it also accepts R. 
In fact, if you take a look at this very closely, it looks like no matter where you are, say if you're at Q2 and you input an R, it accepts it. If you're at Q1 and you input an R, it accepts it. So basically anything that ends in an R, it also accepts. So we can kind of think, okay, may maybe this R actually just means reset. In fact, that's probably why it shows R. In fact, in the original example, the word was reset. I was just being mean by taking out the letters E set. But okay, so that's kind of interesting. If it resets the machine, it's okay. If it's a zero, it accepts. Now, what does it do here? Well, perhaps it's an addition convention that we've done before. So let's take a look at some strings. Let's say, okay, if we put in a one, then we go from Q0 to Q1, and then if we put in another one, we go to Q2, and if we put in another one, then that's okay. Okay, let's let's do something a little bit different. Let's traverse to Q1 and get back to Q0. And we can do that by putting in 1 and 2. Okay, what if we want to go to Q2 and then back to Q1? We can put in 2, 1. Hmm. It's kind of interesting. But what we haven't done is we haven't gone from Q0 to Q2 to Q1 and back. So let's do that path. Okay. Well, from Q0 to Q2, we can do 2. From Q2 to Q1, we can do 2. And from Q1 to Q0, we can do Q. Or a 2. And that's okay. So what we kind of see here is that if we add these numbers, they all equal 3. So we can kind of assume that, hey, as long as our string equals 3, it accepts it. And just to test this, let's put in, let's create a string in our head, just a random one. 2021000R102012. And according to this string, this should accept so we just we just randomly pick some numbers now if we follow the machine which i will do in dark purple and then erase afterwards uh we start oh that's not a good color to do this in let's do red so we start with q0 and we do zero so we go here we do two so we go to q2 we take a one back to q0 then we do a zero a couple times then we reset once so that's good we now take a 1, we take a 0, we take a 2, which takes us back to Q0, we do a 0, we do a 1, and then we do a 2 again, and we end up back at Q0. So, this accepted, just like our hypothesis. So it accepts multiples of 3. Basically what this means is that this is a 0 mod 3 check. Or I should say a 0 is equal to n mod 3 check. And if this is the case, it accepts it. If not, it rejects it. So you can play around with this, and you can make sure, hey, after the last reset, our string adds up to a multiple of 3. And if it does, then it accepts the machine, and you can play around with this. So that's kind of cool. And that is the basics of finite state machines. You can do crazy things with them. You can construct a machine where in fact it only takes multiples of 7, or maybe any string that has common factors of say 2 and 5, which again, these are really complicated machines compared to this, but they can be done. And the, the main important part, which I didn't write anywhere, is that these are abstract. Of course, these can be very concrete and just be drawn to do what you want, but most of these are sort of like programming flowcharts. And I think that's probably the best way to describe it, is that these are flowcharts for your programs or for operators. For instance, this 0 mod 3 check is kind of an algorithm, right? Because it takes a number, and then it does a bunch of things, and keeps basically subtracts 3 times n, and checks, okay, does it equal 0? Well, yeah, it does. 
so it accepts it. And you can do this for, say, okay, well, what if instead of uh, this sort of thing, we have three different types of numbers? Let's say we have odd numbers, we have even numbers, and then we have these imaginary numbers which are neither odd or even. I'm inventing something here. So we'll call these, um, we'll draw the numbers like this. It's just an imaginary number. And it's like an X with two dots. We're doing this and we say, okay, well, I want a machine that only accepts these. So basically, it only accepts these. And there's certain combinations of odd and even numbers that you can make with this cool operator that is a donut with blazing suns coming out of it. So if you take A and you have this little star thing B, then you can get this imaginary number out of it. And this is really abstract and crazy, right? But you can design a machine that under specific circumstances does this, and then you can program it. So that is the whole purpose of finite state machines. Um, clearly, things you would talk about in a formal languages course or further mathematics, I will erase this red line. Um, so here we see that if we start at Q0, we put in 0, we go back, we put in R, we go back, if we put in a 2, we go to Q2, and we put in a 1, we go to Q1. It is pretty deterministic. Like, we know where we're going. But what if I said, okay, and if you put in a 2, you might go to Q1 as well, well instead. Um, if you're in Q1, and you put in a reset, well, you might go to Q2. In fact, you might even just go back to itself, who knows. And what about from Q2? Well, basically anywhere you go, Maybe a 1 would be nice to go back to a cell 2, and then you have a non-deterministic finite state machine. And that gets a little bit more interesting, but if you're interested in that, there is tons of stuff online. Uh, that was finite state machines. If you have any questions or good homework problems that you should probably let me do on camera, because a lot of uh, homework problems in discrete math, they don't really touch on finite state machines, and if they do, they usually go a little bit beyond this, and that's normally not taught in the first course, but I'm including it here, so kind of a kind of a weird spot to be including this video. But if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments, and I will answer them as quickly as possible.